people whose first relationship was very long term. What weird thing did you believe was normal until you started seeing other people? My first boyfriend would always leave me small presents or notes underneath my pillow if I had to get up earlier than he did. He was quite romantic and told me I'll love you quite a lot. When I got a new boyfriend I caught myself looking underneath my pillow for at least a month slash two months in. Just out of habit. That you should be happy together now, and not constantly waiting for some vaguely defined future where everything's settled down. Daily binge drinking until I realized uh, I'm an alcoholic and b, hetero relationships don't work when one partner tries to drink the gay away. Only took me 9 years but I got there eventually. Not me but the girl I'm currently dating said that her first long term boyfriend would stare at himself in the bathroom for an hour or so before going to bed each night. I thought most guys liked having their nipples played with because my first ex did. My second boyfriend was so confused when I started licking his titty lomeo. She made me believe the old TV tropes of women never wanting sex. I had to work my butt off to get her to give me some action. The next girl I had was just freaking amazed that I didn't just ask for it when I wanted it. The bewildered look on her face when she finally asked you realize I'm frisky too right? I texted my then new girlfriend about where I was and who I was with about every 30 minutes. After the third time, she told me that she didn't need to get updates on what I was doing, and to just let her know when I got home safe. I remember feeling almost a physical weight being lifted off my chest because I didn't have to worry about my girlfriend freaking out if I didn't update her. I learned what trust felt like that night. I am actually amazed at how many married couples are this way. I just thought it was common sense to trust your spouses doing what they said they were doing. No point in being crazy until there is a reason to be. This is morbid but I thought it was normal to argue every day. I thought all couples have their bickering and it was just a regular thing. I was astounded when I went into my next relationship and actually got on with the guy and went weeks and weeks without having any issues. It always felt like the bubble was going to burst. Goes to show, don't stay in a relationship just because you've already invested a ton of time. You get one life, spend it with someone who makes you laugh every day. P is not a documentary, being used as a sex doll, contorted into uncomfortable positions, and pounded until you bleed, can't stand up, or just break down crying from the pain isn't normal, nor is anal a necessity. We were both virgins and he had major pee brain. I thought I was bad at sex and would never be able to have a positive experience with intimacy until I finally left him and was with my second boyfriend. I'm okay now. But wow was that a horrible person to lose my virginity to. My ex put her happiness on me making it my responsibility. Would demand I stay around and cut my work hours back and then be upset when we wouldn't have money to go out. Every time I would try and leave I was coerced with sex to stay. Because I was young and stupid. After 8 years I had enough I moved 5 states away. Had a chain of bad relationships that ended. Took some time to work on myself and I am now engaged to an amazing woman I can communicate with share feelings about issues and who values a healthy relationship. Psychological abuse. I have a physical reaction now when my current partners are nice to me when I do something he would have berated me for hours and locked me in my room for. Like, I get a panic attack because my partners are nice to me when I drop a glass or got laid off. Or forgot to unload the dishwasher. And then they don't bring it up every time they're irritated with me. My ex was still yelling at me 14 years later for crap I did when we first started dating. Crap like I forgot to pick up his laundry from the floor or bought the wrong brand of bacon. At the end there, the lectures lasted hours as he recounted 14 years of offenses. My current partners? They don't throw crap in my face that I did the day before. The dissonance is crazy. I knew the other abuse wasn't normal, but my stepdad is the same way with my mom, so I had no idea. I just thought it's how men are. Not every guy wants to throw on Motown and slow dance with you. Some of them don't even care to touch you. I miss the slow dances. That some girls, in a relationship, don't like to kiss as often as others. I'm just talking about pecs when IGF gets home etc. I always enjoyed a hello kiss but I guess some girls don't. Are herpes free since 73 with a username like that I would have also been a little hesitant to get a peck. Being cowed into an open arrangement equals normal. 
him introducing me to friends while hanging out or going to parties and then him telling me later in the evening after the ice had broken that they were actually the girl. S. He was freaking capitulating to his insistence that we continue to hang out even though I was uncomfortable with knowing this new information. Equals normal. Him making unwelcome and uncomfortable comments to other women I was friends with in front of me to attempt to orchestrate threesomes that I was not okay with. Equals normal. If you love me, you'll chase after me equals normal. If you love me you'll leave FaceTime up at all times so I can see what's going on in your dorm equals normal. If you love me you will not show any sad or mad emotion because it ruins my mood equals normal. OMG totally forgot about the you're responsible for my mood, but I'm not responsible for yours. The logic of these people. People's love languages are all different. It's especially jarring when you have a lot of experience doing things a certain way, and then finding out that isn't what somebody else needs. It can take some work to figure out what's inherent to yourself and what was learned from your partner. This is super valid and I feel like it applies to other types of relationships too. My ex basically taught me that it wasn't okay for me to be upset about things. Every time I would get my feelings hurt, even when I was upset about something completely unrelated to him, it was somehow flipped around so I ended up reassuring and comforting him. That crap really messed me up, and I basically had to relearn how to be vulnerable with my so. He also had a very solid plan of how he expected me to live my life. Basically his main goal for me was to have kids and be a good housewife. Yikes, on the bright side, nowadays I'm happily engaged and my fiancé treats me with so much love and respect. He's supportive of my dreams and we are able to lean on each other in times of hardship. That every time was essentially a quickie. Almost a whole decade of nothing but 5 thrusts and then blast off. After that relationship ended I felt like Jasmine on a magic carpet ride. A whole new world. It wasn't super long term. Only about a year but when you're in high school that's fairly long term. My ex was a very clingy dude. Sweet but would follow me around every social gathering and get jealous of me spending time with my friends. When I started dating the guy who is now my husband I remember looking around at a party early on of mostly my friends that he hadn't met before and I couldn't find him. I asked someone where he was and he was out by the fire with a group of people chatting and hanging out. I was astonished that we could just go our separate ways in a social setting and that was totally fine. We didn't have to be attached at the hip the whole time. I tried to change her. That was my emotional insecurity. My bad Melissa. A lot of girls like to freak. Your partner should actually make an effort to spend time with you. You shouldn't have to surprise them to spend any time with them. This makes me sad. Her father hating me. I just thought this was normal. But in the subsequent three relationships, last one turning into a marriage and family, the parents were kind and I couldn't believe that is possible. This is a little strange I guess. Sort of an individual thing. But, with my first two relationships, 5 years total between the two, I never realized how cuddly I am. I used to hate being touched or kissed, and I never realized that wasn't just the way I was. I even thought I might be asexual, but deep down I knew that wasn't the case. My fiancé used to be the same way, but when we met, somehow things just clicked into place. Passive aggression. Gaslighting. Subtly guilting me for every choice I made that he disagreed with, treating me like his therapist and dumping his issues on me. We dated from ages 16-25. It took a bit of therapy to unfrick my brain, and to even learn that some of our interactions were toxic, because they were so normalized. People always said relationships take work, so I guess I just thought that was what relationships were. Luckily I was wrong because my partner now is the most genuine human I've ever met. But it's kind of funny, and sad, because every once in a while I'll think oh, so this is what it's supposed to be like. It's a bittersweet realization because although I'm happy to be where I am, it's a bummer that it took so long to get here because I ignored my instincts for so long in the first place. That sex should last more than 45 seconds. Phew. For a second I thought you were going to say it was supposed to last over a minute. I would lick the side of my first girlfriend's face like a dog and she loved it. My second girlfriend slapped me when I tried it. For me you won the competition here. Suicide threats. Black eyes. Self-harm manipulation. 
social media and phone stalking rights, remove female friends from social media and life, sex as a currency, must respond to texts within 20 minutes or the result is one or more of the above, finally got out of that one after 3 long long years, learned a whole lot, helped to build my now very strong relationship though so hey, take the positive and leave the rest am I right? Wow we must have had the same ex. Glad you got out of that situation. It's a stressful trap to say the least. Actually thinking about the future was a big thing. Since we got together in high school there always seemed to be this idea in the back of my head that this was going to end eventually. And because of that I never really looked at anything like a future together. When we graduated it was just too comfortable to break up and even though things were fine enough to stay, it was a drag that never ended because I just never really thought of them as the person I wanted to be with forever. It's hard to say when exactly I stopped loving her, but it was a relationship of comfort and convenience more than anything. And when she eventually cheated on me and broke us up, it was still just so easy to get back together on and off after that that I could feel myself falling back into a commitment I didn't want to be a part of. Now it's wild to actually think about a future with my partner. I genuinely look forward to stuff like maybe living together, or getting married and seeing the world and all that romantic stuff, before everything was more or less convenience, but I had no idea how great it was to actually look forward to potential life events with someone else. 2. This one is perfect for me, because of the way my dad was. I wasn't phased when my first boyfriend constantly ridiculed me for my passions and talents, even when it was in front of everyone. I also thought you had to explicitly say that you did not want to have sex if you were not in the mood that night before you drifted off, otherwise your boyfriend could just stick it in from behind while you were asleep and you couldn't stop him or he'd get really mad. Oh, and I thought I was a butthole for wanting to use a condom when I had work not too much later on that day because I didn't want to walk around with a mess. I also had an IUD. He glared at me and said, was supposed to get married. If you're really immature enough to let something like that come between us maybe you're not mature enough for sex. I think it's fair to say I was in a bad relationship. It wasn't until I was in my third relationship, second guy was worse, that I realized all of that was really, really bad. The trauma from that and other incidents in the relationship didn't really kick in until I had my realization, which is really weird. I read that usually trauma will only set in when you finally feel safe to feel it. I grew up in a pretty strict Christian home and was taught that sex before marriage was a sin. My first teenage boyfriend and I were together for 5 years and never came anywhere close to having sex. At the time, I thought it was because I was a good Christian. Since sex before marriage was wrong, I didn't want to have sex with him. All my friends were either having sex or struggling not to. I didn't understand this because I didn't have the desire to do wrong. Just as I didn't have the desire to hurt people or lie or steal. He and I broke up as our lives went in different paths. My next relationship became sexual pretty quickly, and it was only then that I realized that I was never really attracted to my ex, which is why I didn't want to have sex with him. She's supposed to be nice to you. Who would have thought? Even though I knew sex wasn't supposed to hurt I thought I was just one of those girls that couldn't get wet where sex hurts. I am not. I was just not physically attracted to him at all but I thought that was how all couples felt after the honeymoon period wore off. I never dared to look at his body for an extended period of time and I never felt comfortable being naked. When we broke up I thought I was asexual or lesbian. I identify as bisexual because I just didn't seem to like men at all. Turned out I just wasn't attracted to that many men. I can now stare at my partner for hours and even just watching him doing mundane things can turn me on in an instant. I love laying naked in bed with him whether it's to cuddle or to have sex. I feel comfortable around him and are not afraid of his dong either. He had a birth defect which left him with two holes in the tip of his dong. I thought one was for pee and the other was for sperm. My next boyfriend was very confused when I asked him why he only had one hole. My first boyfriend was so ridiculously clingy, like if we were in bed together we would have to cuddle otherwise he would cry and think that I was mad at him, when in reality I was just hot and wanted some space. I just thought that what relationships were. My relationship now is nothing like that. It is so nice to be in the same room but doing completely separate things and not have to worry about each other. I found it amazing how down to earth, 
reasonable, and aware I thought I was the whole time. Eventually, it hit me like a brick. How naive I was. How I would find ways to justify anything and everything. I was disgusted with myself, realizing how each time I was treated like crap. I would pat myself on the back for being able to endure the hard times that others wouldn't be able to. Yet, I thought I was a true Prince Charming who was earning his eventual, inevitable happy ending. Yet no. Value yourself more. I do believe that it is possible to find your true love online, and maintain a fulfilling and rewarding long distance romantic relationship. For a long time, but not forever. But never justify being treated badly. Never justify being neglected. And never ever ever assume that this is as good as you can get. You can't even dream of what you can achieve and who else you'll meet. Wait. Not everyone wants commitment? I always look to the future. It was nice that the guys I dated in between my long relationships were kind enough to break it off when they realized what I was really after though. It just like a lot of toxic behavior, it wasn't a healthy relationship and I found myself looking after the other person and organizing my life around their needs. Four years later and I am still learning what a healthy relationship looks like and what it's like when someone is looking after my needs. Abuse. I thought occasional abuse was just, you know, part of the mix of things. Sometimes you get good times, sometimes you get attacked. I was just lucky I was big so she couldn't do much damage. I felt for other guys who probably had it way worse. It was eye-opening to find out random physical attacks weren't just part of the excitement. Girls be crazy, right? Everybody knows that. Emotional and you know, they beat you and draw blood sometimes. Ha ha, whatever. My first GF used to squirt. Nothing to do with me. That's just how she was. After say, 5 minutes of foreplay she'd be squirting all over the place. And then for the rest of the session she'd be extremely wet. Fast forward to my next relationship. I was like, dang, you broke. Was fingering her profusely. Doing all sorts of things and was getting frustrated because I thought she wasn't into me. Or I was doing something wrong. You shouldn't have to be the only one putting in any effort. My first BF never let me get to know him. It was like pulling teeth to get anything. He knew I had siblings. That I was a closet pagan. I liked experimenting with cooking. And a bunch of other things. But I had to basically stalk his socials to learn anything about him. If I asked his opinion on an outfit. Or basically anything. He didn't care. I never learned what he liked. And I got tired of doing what felt like all this extra work for someone who didn't care about me. Crying. All. The. Time. She would use tears to the point of manipulation. This was in high school BTW. I thought that was just a girl thing but no way. My current GF and I have been dating for three and a half years and she only cries when she's in pain or having a panic attack. Both of which are not my fault and I can help her through. Dang I thought every girl cried like three times a day. If any of you are dating a Kendra from Southern California, get the heck away. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.